pretty good. It was pretty boring considered to some people. What, that one. person you know that was on mushrooms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Just like it. <laughs> These are the two most boring people you ever seen that are just Yeah. Well, so what, man? I get that. Just gotta, I think we can turn this up a little bit here. It's quite quiet. Make it loud in your headphones. Oh, that's good. Is yeah, that better enough? Yeah, awesome. Okay, right. cool. Yeah, 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 good, good. Um, okay, well, let's get this. Uh, okay, so this is podcast number six. This is Pete Thompson. I'm Ryan. Um, welcome. Welcome to the show, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit spontaneous, too. We weren't really planning to do this. I know. So we were, yeah. we were over at um, the local pub across the street, the brewer, or brewery, uh, Coast Mountain Brewery. Shout out to Coast Mountain Brewery. Um, and we were uh, watching an avalanche. Doing some avalanche safety training, you know, a little intro introduction. Right. To, yeah. And it was pretty good, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was packed in there. Yeah. It's a small little pub. It probably holds, like, I think the max is, like, it, 20 people usually. There's, like, 86 people in there. It was so funny. Like, at the start, they kind of said, this is not a course. You know, like, because <laughs> we don't leave here thinking that you can, like, do whatever. Well, because people are kind of dumb. Yeah. I mean, not everybody, but some people. Yeah, like, oh, some people. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm good to go. People put bought the gear to go touring tonight. Yep. They called in via escape route on the way home. Some stuff. <laughs> so, can I rent gear tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was cool, because I think, um, I mean, obviously we live in a mountain town, and I think even if you just ski in all day, those small little things can just open your eyes to what's into the, the possibilities of what's, a bit, what's out there. But I mean, you'd leave probably forgetting it all, but um, it's good. Awareness is huge for sure. It, it's reinforcement of everything, right? You know, yeah. that's all you're doing is right. just these little small bits and pieces that you can kind of pick up on, and yeah. I don't know. It's almost like yeah, obviously whenever you do those courses, it'll be like a, a level of safety, but different people have different ways of approaching different things, and you know you gotta just gotta read what's in front of you at that time. You know. Yeah. It's like that guy was asking all those questions. He's like, "What should you be looking for?" And he's like, <laughs> "He's like, do you just let a course?" Go. Yeah, exactly. Just go and learn something, yeah. right? You know. You should be looking for a course, not exactly. what the app could do. Like totally. But I think too, like the. People need social interaction. So even those small things where it's like you go, you have like a like-minded people term driving this, but they're they all the same thing. Like-mindedness. Yeah. You don't like it? Like-minded. We're all very like-minded. Yeah. Living in the ski town, I we know. all think the same. Proctor. Every single person that lives here thinks the same. exactly the same thing. I hope so. Hope they all think that. Uh, I, did you did you not know that? We're all like-minded. No, I'm not. I'm just getting yeah. a shit right now. I just think it's a weird term, but I also think it's like that. It's like, um, I mean, I've taken my uh, AST one, which is Avalanche Skills Training. Is that what it is? Safety training. Yeah, so Avalanche uh, AST one plus I took. Oh, very good. And the plus is like an extra two hours of class time right there. Mm-hmm. Um, that totally works. But Avalanche training is, I mean, they were talking about two, you can keep yourself in control because they're talking about the difference between like so AST1 is the first course AST2 is the second course and you can do OPS1 or OPS2 and OPS1 mm-hmm. is more of like a job so a that's, job. that's what I'm in for was patrol right um, right. working in the industry tail ski guides patrol, you mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so ski patrol right. um, so working in the industry it's definitely a lot more of a, uh, a snow science kind of um, course where you spend like pretty much you do a like every day you're looking at snow pits and you're looking at different types of snow you know um, different conditions and what affects uh, different crystals like it's like it goes right into it right yeah it shows it's the way different temperatures and different snow forms in different ways and creates different yeah. layers and stuff but what I was getting at was that um, you the, there's that little th- threshold of like you think you know enough mm-hmm. and you don't and that gets you into trouble. Yeah, so yeah. there's that threshold where you get past that. But yep. these courses don't they teach you it's like they teach you what to know, but you have to go and learn it. Mm. Like they teach you here's the things you should know, here's how to know them, but you have to go to the back country with experience and use so them on a regular basis. You ever heard the like the expression two hundred hours? Yeah. So after two hundred hours you get to a place of confidence where you think you've got it. And, you and then it's usually when something happens, right? And that's right. when when you get complacent and then that's you know that's when accents happen. So There's the whole difference because like, they talk two and hours and they talk about like if you look at um, Malcolm Gladwell talking about ten thousand hours of becoming an expert professional. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, like, it's a very small. That's a large sport. difference. Totally. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Nine thousand yeah, yeah. eight hundred. That's exactly what it is <laughs> mathematically. <laughs> yeah, totally I right. do math math ten thousand hours. <laughs> okay, good. You can yeah. tell. But yeah, only only adding and subtracting. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, on that, so we're talking about snow snow safety quickly here. So both, I'm, I mean, I'm a novice on what I'm talking about. I'm so am I. That's yeah. why we're doing. Like here's the thing. I think people sometimes big themselves up to be able to 
they'll know a lot more than what they actually do, and that's that's when accents. I think sometimes people assume that I know more know more than what I do, right. because you know, like a he's on patrol, and he's you know, skis all right, and you know, it doesn't mean shit in the, the backcountry, right? You know? No, it doesn't. I think there's like a you got to be honest with yourself, right? That's like the, the big thing, and and with everybody else, right? You just gotta you know don't try and talk the talk and be, or you'll die. Yeah. Literally. This is it worth it? I you'll be so. murdered to death by. Yeah. Uh, am I headphones too loud right now? Am I no, it's good. No, 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 it's cool. Yeah. Um, what we were going to get at is that, so we were talking about ski science and, and, and like taking an avalanche training course and then whatever, but um, there's a difference between that, so there's like mountain guides, like ACMG guides, there's mm-hmm. like the Association of Certified Mountain Guides. Yep. Or guides that are around here. But there's like rock guides. Mm-hmm. So you do. But there, you can still be an ACMG rock guy, is that right? I'm, I'm not too sure. But I, but I feel like the idea with the mountain guide is that you kind of combine you do it all. everything. Exactly. Right. You know, so it's summer and winter. Right. And the way they used to do it back home is they had uh, like these two qualifications. And it was say, a mountain instructor award and then a mountain instructor certificate. So the MIA and mountain instructor award was like a, a summer based. Sort of qualification. Okay. So rock climbing, hill walking, and then you did your MIC, your mine instructor certificate, and that was more winter based. You just so, say, you say hell walking? Hell walking. Walking hill, through a well, hill. <laughs> Mike, who walks through fucking hell? He's got training uh, for that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but no, no hell walking, just hell walking. Hell walking, yeah, you don't need a certificate. Walking that. through hell, that's pretty tough, right? You need it's a eternity. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Eternity, right? Well, according to some people, for right. sure. No one feels like an eternity. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, pretty much you combine the two awards. At the end of it, you can have this really good, like, all-around uh, guide experience. You right. know, so it's like a combination of both winter and summer. You know, so you can work here and do whatever. So. But you're a climber. <laughs> have you ever tried to? <clears throat> Sorry, rock climber. I'm not a corporate ladder climber. You're a climber. climber. <laughs> <laughs> But if you're a climber, so um, have you, like, do you have any certificates like, like we talked about this before? Uh, no, I did, yeah, yeah. So I, um, so whenever I, my whole climbing kind of experience started when I was like, at, whenever I first went to university, yeah. you know, back in uh, 2008, and I went and did a degree where I could get all these qualifications. What well, do you have a degree in? Outdoor education with environmental science. Oh, sweet. Now, when I say I have a degree in, I use the term light, like, lightly. But you passed. Yeah, I got there. And you got, you have like... At, we called it 2-2. Two, two, like, like a few degrees of separation from your degree. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to talk about it right now. Okay, right. Uh, But, uh, no, but, uh, yeah, no, I did it. And um, the the idea was, and in my head, when I was like 16, I was like, obviously I want to do this. And I remember going to like my career show. Oh, dude. I could totally freak out. What's wrong? Are you not being recorded? I didn't get recorded. <laughs> Man. Okay, take two. Okay, that's been going on. No way. Swap. You didn't swap record? Yeah, yeah. I just want to record right now. You forgot to record? You forgot to record everything? Do you need the sound tech to come over there again? I'm yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. but the good thing is, is that thing records. Yeah, yeah. Levin, do you want to come over and take a look at this? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're back. Uh, from, uh, I'm getting deja vu right now. <laughs> yeah, we're back. See, now it's recording. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so that has... A, that has audio, so we should be fine. The phone should pick it up. I'll have to correct oh, no, it. Let's just run with this. It's good. Whatever. No, but you won't hear the first. Oh, whatever. That's okay. I'm happy cool. you may have you I'm not worried. Okay, okay, cool. We'll, we'll talk for a bit. I'm going to fix it up. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, you were talking about um, you finished school um, with a... Um, so yeah, graduated 2000... Whoa, was it 2011? 2012? Um, really? Yeah. Uh, with a... A degree in outdoor education? Yeah. Okay, cool. With environmental science. Okay, cool. So with the understanding that I wanted to. Yeah, firstly. And then secondly, I was going to like try and be a, an outdoor pursuits instructor. Right? Oh, cool. Okay. So whenever I, uh, whenever I was like 16, I was doing all this like work experience, kind of like focused on that. So mm-hmm. I used to work at all these outdoor ed centers, you know, doing like kayaking, canoeing, rock cool. climbing, just helping out. Right. Um, and then whenever I went to uni, it was like uh, the first time where I could get qualifications to work in the industry. So I got my, uh, they called it an ML, Mountain Leader, for summer, which was meant I could take groups walking and uh, right. above a certain, you can go like 
high alpine, which which there isn't too much of in the UK, obviously. You know, you get right. like the three highest peaks, which are like, you know, just over a thousand meters. But um, which is weird because like there's a lot of mountaineers and climbers that come from in the UK. Totally, but it's because uh, it's everything's so close. Like you can go to like Chamonix or somewhere like that. I, I, you know. Yeah, like it's, so Chamonix is definitely more of a, like a mountaineering kind of background. Right. You know, where you go out and you're you're combining skiing and climbing and all these kind of different things. But I find like in the UK, it's like. It's it's not it's there's no big wall stuff you know it's not like Squamish you know right so, uh, to a point you know I think there's there's obviously still bigger stuff and you can find harder grades to to push yourself with and obviously some of the best uh, trail climbing like even in Ireland there's some of the best trail climbing in the world like it's um, well, cause it's pretty special mountains in Ireland right. I would say <laughs> you have a ski team, don't you? <laughs> uh, no, well they do now. It's it's called the EI ski team. I just recently joined, so. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> I'm gonna be on that too. Yeah, 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 good. Uh, we uh, we can you know be like an international ski and climb team for sure. But uh, Ireland is and the UK is just kind of well known for its um, single pitch. You know, right, hard, sure. sustained, scary, right. bold lines. But so to go back to the training though, you don't have excuse me. Um, you were like a but you're, through your climbing, mm-hmm. you were, became like a rigger, like um, you would do... Uh, yeah, with my rope access. Rope access, yeah, right. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So that, that, that kind of came later on. And uh, so once I kind of graduated, and uh, so I worked at a climbing gym for a year in Liverpool. Cool. And uh, I, you know, I was kind of focused on being an outdoor pursuits instructor. And then I got to the gym and I was like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. I was where I was doing birthday parties and I was doing adult <laughs> groups and like all this. And I'm like, I honestly don't want to take people climbing, you know, like yeah. all these kids just running around. I was, I was like... Nah, I'm, I'm okay, thank you. But um, whenever I moved to Squamish, it kind of concreted the fact that I didn't want to do anything. I met so many different people who were climbers, and right. they uh, they're from all over too. You know, people who were like, you know, one of the good guys I climbed with he was a chef. And whenever we used to wake up, like he uh, he was parked out on the like the just beside the road. I used to wake up from my campsite. And walk oh. down and meet him for breakfast. Because he'd make breakfast. He'd make breakfast. Yeah, yeah, it was so good. That's cool. But again, little things like that that kind of like made me think, you know, in order to be a climber, you don't necessarily have to work in the industry. So no, you just climb. Exactly. Yeah, you got to find a way to have as much time off. That's the deal. And you know, so and working in the industry feels like you don't get much time off because you don't make enough money to work. And you're constantly surrounded by it too. You get you bored. You pissed or something. Yeah, bored and I, I don't know. I just kind of got over the whole scene of people telling me, you know, oh, you gotta. You got to do this climb. You got to do this. You got to try climb. You got to sport climb. You got to boulder. I'm like, I'm just gonna do whatever I want. You know. Yeah, you gotta get away from me for a few minutes. Mm. <laughs> you stop talking about the <laughs> right? But um, yeah, once the, so I kind of obviously then started looking at the rope access because I had a lot of rope work skills, and I was just like, well, maybe this is pretty straightforward. Not pretty straightforward. Sorry, this was very, you know. Not very new. I'd known known a lot of this stuff for a long time, right. and I could make a decent paycheck. You know, I was making like two hundred fifty dollars a day at some of my jobs, right? You know, which That's pretty is pretty cool. solid for doing. You know, for the the work was pretty sustained, but like you know, we're working. There's some days we work maybe four or five hours a day. Right. There's days maybe work ten. Like it all, it all balances. You still get your day rate, right? But to get to that point, what what's the the uh, rope access course, or whatever you take, whatever it's called? Yeah, uh, rope access one. Yeah, I rather. Oh yeah, okay. international rope access okay. training and that, association. I think so international gets you. It literally means international anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So I did the I did the course in um, in Ireland, and then I was able. I could have used it out here, but it was that, like a three day course, five day course. It's a yeah, yeah. It's like a week long course. And is there like um is there a um like a first aid aspect to it or no? Nope, no. Just so that's all up. on top. Yeah, yeah. So it's all focused on rope access. Um, every day kind of stuff you be doing, and um, you know, whenever I did my rope access training, I thought like you know you kind of knew it all and then same with like you actually just using it for work the first job I rocked up to I was like I felt pretty not out of depth but I was like I'm not really too sure what's going on here you know what you're doing yeah yeah right because it was like the rope access gets you to where you need to be but then you've got a job to do. Yeah, so, learn, so, the, yeah. so, so the job we were doing was actually cleaning windows. Right. So, right, so you don't, right. <laughs> I was like, I've never cleaned windows before, you know? Right. So again, like, the guys I was working with were really good. So you've got this kind of skill and you're like, cool, I'm good. And then you like, get set up and then I was like, well, now I got to clean a window. You know, and what's more dangerous, giving the window cleaner ropes to climb up that thing or give a rope back to this guy, the, the window cleaner. For like. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like we, um, the, 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 the area we were like the, the windows we were cleaning too, it's, um, 
it was like a canopy over a shopping center right and it's like this open air kind of thing so cool. you were literally climbing out onto this like um triangular kind of uh climbing frame right and yeah. then the um the glass was above you so you were constantly like cleaning the windows like oh, this right man. so it was it was pretty hard work you it's know like paint the ceiling it, very similar yeah, yeah yeah and constantly looking back and like your neck would get sore but um again the the you know being up there you're probably like a solid you know 30 40 meters off the ground and you're right in the middle of a shopping center right one of my coolest moments with from work was actually like uh, my third day and uh i got her uh excuse me radios too and my boss was like hey listen let's go get some lunch rig up the rig up an abseal out and i was like sure so i had some ropes with me so i rigged up like an abseal and i abseiled down in front of the apple store <laughs> abseal means you descend descend from yeah, yeah. On so the i said but i ever said like the abseal out of the uh out of the roof out of the ceiling right in front of the apple store yeah, no. and i'm going past and all these people like video of me as i'm coming down you know i'm like this is pretty cool That's i'm cool. like don't mess up right now yeah you know it's just so, rope the rope ends <laughs> yeah i'm gone you know so, the yeah, yeah yeah but um that was that was a pretty cool job there's a lot to, to learn from that one you ever done like um like bridge stuff or like because uh, around here you could you could probably work on film and television around here yeah as a rigger um you know so we i worked on a film set back in uh, in belfast on uh, the frankenstein chronicles it's on netflix Hmm. and um it was too we didn't do too much rope access stuff but more it's kind of cool because we were working in like a, a swimming pool okay and uh, what they had done is they'd set like a metal framework around the bottom of the pool and they were videoing like all these scenes and what we had to do was we had to swim down and, like tie off all these boats so like the boats could move and we, we set up pulleys so that when somebody pulled a rope at the far end of the pool the boat would move you know oh, and stuff like so that you're underwater too. underwater yeah well no first but like not for too long you know but, like yeah. you know but uh you weren't scuba diving. i was but I, I would be in the pool maybe 12 hours a day you know wow you get like, like prune hands only pretty much yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah because but like we were there it's like a cfd kind of um uh, like rescue because we were in the water like all the time and right. the pool was heated oh which that's was fancy which, but yeah. it was like honestly it was like sitting in a, in a hot tub all day you know to get paid to do it there's um a friend of mine I worked on, on a, I worked on Amazing Race Canada up in, in Fort McMurray and there was this dude that I worked with who did water safety um what's the problem something wrong Oh. No, no, she's checking yeah. it out. She's looking. Yeah. I was like, "It's fancy, eh?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how half of it works. <laughs> I, I can look at this, and that's all. But uh, he, was like a water safety guy, he's like, a, I don't know what his deal is, but he would just sit with at, a throw bag, like literally, like with like a, yeah, beside yeah. like these tailing ponds, yeah, yeah, up in northern Alberta. Mm -hmm. And if somebody fell, and he just he had to be, he would go, he would sit there for like, like weeks, like nothing. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, something could happen, like, really, really bad, I'm sure, but it's just like sit there, but. He gets paid like 500 bucks a day, more than yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, plus danger base. Yeah, and because so, all the, nobody else has that certification. So, and, and certification. That, and, so, and, and that's where that kind of like, the, the, the point for me doing that job is pointless. You know, I'm not sitting up there for, regardless of how much you're getting paid an hour, or, you know, you can get paid a lot, but the the drain of having to sit and wait for something to happen, you know, like you could, you could sit and you could sit in an office. I could, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think I can do it. Right. Not me personally. Well, it's just drive, but, drive me crazy. I guess the thing is, is like, you do it for like, in my experience of working these jobs, where you just kind of hang out. You get paid a bunch to do three weeks of work, and you don't work again for a while. Yeah, yeah. So in that situation, it's probably not bad. But if you're doing it every day, I think you know. And I, I've talked a lot about unless this. you're making big bank for two months and yeah, peace yeah. out. And so you know, I've spoke to guys about this too. It's like that you make that bank, and then you realize, well, if I go back and do two months more, I can have this amount. Ah, you get addicted, and you, and you just get sucked into it's it. Heroin, right? you know? Yeah, 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 you know. So and I think that's it's that kind of like you have to be very disciplined in the, the ability to do, you know, that work and kind of just be like, okay, I'm good to go. And so, you know, I, I've talked with Cal about this, my boss, like a lot, and where you've got guys up in Fort McMurray getting paid hundreds of dollars an hour to do their jobs, and then they come off, and next thing you know, they're buying their, their trucks and their houses and everything. Yeah, Fort McFlew, they're doing much blow. Yeah, exactly, and just like top shelf <laughs> liquor, you know, and just like partying hard. And then, I think that's um, changed a bit now, because when I was up there doing, when I was up there for um, Amazing Race, they guys are talking like you know people are unemployed mm -hmm. it's still good but it's still like you i think what happened it used to be sort of sidetracking there but it used to be like you'd go to work and just be, be contract work forever now if you don't work for the oil companies there's no more contracting gigs mm -hmm. not as not as big as what's saying then the fires happened two years ago and yeah, yeah but i think there was like a five-year period where people just crushing it maybe 10 maybe 15 years i don't know like a while sure but if you didn't have the certificate you'd make whatever good money but if you had something like that you mm -hmm. go there and you double it or i don't know i'm naive but i say you know like we always talk about you know 
I can't remember what the, the, the expression or the like the the picture of calories he's like you know the bigger the storage locker the more shit you put in it right yeah for sure so the more money you have the more you're going to spend it on right I don't think there's ever a point where you're like for for again I'm generalizing completely but like there's people are. out there who are you know very good with money but then there's a lot of people who are very bad with it too I'm not that great with it no I'm yeah. horrible with it yeah, yeah but like it's it's more the fact that you always find something to spend it on you know I'm a philanthropist I consider myself giving away the money I have yeah just anybody who wants <laughs> for, it for good times yeah, yeah like give me hamburger I'll give you all the money I have yeah yeah for sure <laughs> But, yeah, I um, think uh, that's so. It's, so that's that's rope access in a nutshell for me, you know. So I kind of like I did the course and I I did. It was a lifestyle I was kind of getting into, or it was like I made good money when I was home, but I felt you know whenever I came back and did did retail for a bit, it was like okay, well I got set hours one till nine. I get the ski in the mornings. Right. I made made okay money, you know. It wasn't bad, but um, have your certificates expired? They have. You have to renew yeah, them? yeah. Do you remember okay. so? Because I couldn't work for anybody else after I came back. I don't so remember. Once, so I so I got I did my uh, Arata level one in two thousand and fourteen, two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't used it since. So yeah, it's expired. Hmm. So so I, and I would do it again because it's a great course. It's really interesting. And now you can't access ropes at all. You can't, can't, you can't, can't even get near them. Can't even get anywhere. But you I, want a rope, so how do you access that rope? You I can't, want it. I got taken off me. <laughs> I can't get in my closet. It's I can't locked get away. <laughs> I can't access ropes anymore. There's like, there's like a there's like a digital code of like it being locked and all. Yeah, I can't. You've got to you got to show it your little yeah. certificate, right? It scans it and then I'm allowed right. to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So well, we're at the yeah. So we should tell it. Right? We're down at grind up. What was it? Just before I went home. Oh like, yeah. A couple, couple weeks ago. I think we did we talk about this in the last time. We can talk about it again. It's Maybe. funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I want a climbing rope. Yeah, yeah Pete wanted a climbing rope. He was very Nothing nonchalant either. about it. Yeah, and they were a bit annoyed. The whole team, the whole, so we went to this climbing event and Pete was like one of the better climbers there and people were pretty good stuff, but then I guess they were, everyone was talking about this rope that like, there's like black diamond, like, this is a great <laughs> yeah. climbing rope. And we're like, I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not even running down my, I can't climb. So I'm just hanging on the wall. So Pete's knocking off some climbs and then I was like, I'm going to win this fucking rope. And then he didn't say anything. I totally, I thought, I thought it would be cool. I'm going to win this rope. And then they're like, Pete Thompson or whatever. He didn't even <laughs> care. And they were like, this is the thickest prize. And I was like, like, I've got a rope. I had like two or three before this, right? Like, yeah. It's great. Thank you so much. And I went to walk away and they're like, oh, a picture. And I'm like, what do you need a picture for? <laughs> yeah. me, me with a climbing rope like this. Like, so they didn't, they didn't post Pete's picture on their Instagram. They posted up the guy who won the backpack. Yeah, yeah. And he was far too excited. I know. It's just a backpack relax, dude. Whatever. Yeah, backpack. What? A, I mean, it was a was it black diamond backpack? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Piece of garbage. Anyway, but um, yeah, that was a fun. Call. Have you? Yeah. Have you used the rope? No. You so, just you should just throw it out and make a video of it and show, send them the video. Set it on fire or something like, like that. Hey, remember that rope I won? It's in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Picture yeah. myself yeah, just, car, just sit on the on the couch like <laughs> cutting it up. Yeah. But yeah, but they're expensive ropes. Like if you, I don't know anybody climbs out there, but I don't even want to say out there. Like no one's watching this, but. uh Ropes aren't cheap, like, like four hundred bucks. Yeah, three hundred bucks or something. Yeah, right. But I think the, um, I love the one where like, yo, you can't put a price on your, you know, your safety. You, you can. You totally can. Three hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you hire a guy for five hundred bucks a day. You can put a yeah, price on anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, you totally I'll, can. I'll, I'll murder you for a thousand bucks as long as you sign a waiver. Um, I'm you, just no. I'm sorry. I didn't. That was a bad joke. But <laughs> I'll murder you to death for a thousand bucks. I wonder if someone. Listen to this. If you signed a waiver, I give, I'm not going to do this. I don't, I'm not going to try to murder you, but if you signed a waiver and it was like, I give Ryan Proctor exclusive rights to murder me to death on Friday, mm. December 15th, and then I do it, and I'm like, but your honor, I signed it. I have a, and a signature. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he signed it. And mm-hmm. I, wonder, I wonder what that would do. do. We should get some outside counsel. Hey, Adam. Oh, my. He's busy. <laughs> love it. He's uh, in the zone. One of the podcast guests is in the other room or in the room listening, but. I, I'm, I'm curious if you could, because you can have, this is way off course, it's probably a dumb topic, but you can have doctor assisted suicide, right? Mm-hmm. And so, do, what, what does it matter if it's a doctor or not? If you sign away, we're saying. If, if that's what they're into, right? You know, when you sign the document, no, they sign the document saying you're good then. Like, because you can write a will, hand, you can hand write a will, and when you die, that will is legal. Yeah. I don't see why not. So if someone said to you, Pete, can you sign this for me? I get Adam as my witness. Like I say Adam's Pete can kill me whenever whenever I decide he wants to kill whenever I decide to be murdered. Yep. And I want it to be by knife. 
Yeah, or like a, a big axe. I want it to be That'd like be a cool. big medieval axe. Or, yeah. You know, I want to get in a sh- I want to get in a axe fight with you. <laughs> but I'm just curious. I don't know. That's a dumb thing to talk about. But I'm, I would be curious if it would hold up in court because there is that statue li- statue of limitations. I think something like that. It's where a great statue. Statue. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the wrong term, but there's that thing where if you're if you can be proven clinically insane and you murder somebody, mm-hmm. you can you, you get char- you get put into like a, a sand asylum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's like 72 hours. If you can, I think this is, prove me if I'm wrong with anybody, but I'm pretty sure it's- Comment so, below. <laughs> yeah, call in if you want and complain. But 72 hours, if you're awake for 72 hours, you can prove it. Mm-hmm. Apparently, you can be considered clinically insane and you can do fuck whatever and you still get busted for it. But That'd be kind of cool. I'm going to try it. Sure. This weekend, sure, I'm around. Cool. I got three days. I, I got no work right now, so yeah. we just need a witness. We can be each other's witness. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Mentally and seeing yeah. witnesses. No, but that is an interesting topic. I mean, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's not legal, but you know, I guess uh I'm, I'm, no one's gonna I mean, I'm gonna you're, try you're, it. You're drawing a fine line between, you know, what's, right. what's socially acceptable and what's right. what's legal, right? You know, it's like a uh, Because if you try to kill yourself and it doesn't work Is that attempted murder? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, it is. I don't know if it's legally called that. Like, you did attempt to murder yourself. Mm. So maybe not, like, by a police standard or whatever. Sure. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> off topic. <laughs> what I, so- I, want to t- I want to talk about this because I felt really bad today. Um, I, do you, We've already, you've already talked about it. You should go. I know. Do it. But are you, do you have anything else you want to talk about right now? No, no. It's all cool. you. So this is going to be a dumb story. I came it's in the, I, I was skiing today because we live in a ski town. And uh, I was doing my volunteer job, which I can't tell what it is because it's, it's top secret. But um, I came to the mountain and I was parked. I parked bad in a bad spot today. And when I got there, I tried to, I thought I second guessed it, pulled out, but then I parked again. And when I got down from the mountain today from skiing and I was walking to the parking lot, I saw there was a gentleman talking to another gentleman in the parking lot. Excuse me. <laughs> and he had been handing out tickets to people who were parking in the wrong spot. And I was one of those people. So I came back. It turned out my friend was the one talking to the parking guy. Anyway, he, there, he comes up and I come in hot. I'm mad. I'm like, I, I was just furious from this morning at work and stuff. And I shouldn't have push anyway so I yelled at the guy I used the f-bomb a couple times I was like I'm fuck I'm like I didn't tell him I didn't say that I didn't like wasn't like fuck you I was like this fucking sucks um well that's bullshit blah 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 I know it's not your fault and it's just your job but it's fucking stupid I had a ticket for parking in overhead parking or a um overhead vehicle parking anyway Pete knows the story your vehicle's not over Right, yeah, it's like my vehicle is like a, like a, like it's a, it's a fucking tiny car. No, it's not. No. Anyway, uh, I yelled at a guy and I shouldn't have yelled at him. And so I apologized on the spot, but it wasn't very good. It wasn't a great apology. And a friend of mine was there. We kept talking. I was like, man, I feel bad. I'm like, karma's for the day. I don't really, I usually don't get too mad like that and be an asshole to people. But anyway, I thought I was done. I left and I'm like, oh man, I feel like an asshole. He took the parking ticket back. I didn't get the ticket. Saved me like 55 bucks. Oh, he was very nice to me and I wasn't very friendly to him. Um, so I bugged me for like three hours and I went to the bank today and then he's in the, and he's in the, the parking guy is in the parking lot giving out more tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that guy's got the shittiest job. But, um, he went to get in his car and I, I ran up and I knocked on the window and I, 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 I kind of startled him, but I'm like, Hey man, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm really sorry. He's like, I'm like, I'm the guy you saw today. He was dropping the F bomb and I'm like, I was wrong. And I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ba- I feel badly. And he's like, we, who, when? I'm like, oh, today. He's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I was wrong. I was parking the wrong spot and I feel badly and I apologize to you. And I hope I didn't. You know, he's like, I don't worry. It happens to me all the time. But uh, it made me think, though, that, you know, I was somewhat conscious of the decision I made to be a bit of an asshole. And I, and I didn't have, I, I was lucky enough to have the chance to fix it. I could have just went in the bank and not done it, right? But each day we make these decisions like to park where the fuck we want to park. And, uh, that guy's just doing his job. He just happens to be, he's like a tow guy, right? I mean, people can be assholes like I was, or he could have been an asshole too. We could have been in a scene. Um, but uh, it was just, it was interesting that when I said sorry to him later on, I had the chance to, I felt way better. But I was also like, man, that was just by chance I had that chance to say bye, say thank you to him or say sorry. Yeah, I, I think that that's. But it's like a. 
it, it like you know i don't think anybody gets angry on purpose i think sometimes if i just, was that guy i'd be like that guy's a dick like i wouldn't have been friendly to me sure but yeah yeah like but like i think i think it's been understanding that maybe sometimes there's other factors that have led up to this right i don't think i, don't, I like to think that people don't necessarily and like i'm 95 percent of people are like this but I, I think there is people who are just that that five percent that are pissed all the time right but um, have you ever hit the roof on somebody like flipped out yeah you, oh, have, yeah. you don't have to you don't have to be guilty I, no 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 i know of course yeah i think but like it's more as if something's led up to like a build up contributing but, factors yeah prior. exactly yeah right. but, but so i think one of the biggest things i've learned this summer is that it's like there's there, it can always be worse you know like there's no point getting worked up about something sure you know and i think by approaching things being like okay well like this happened there's there's a reason for everything and rather than just being like what why did this like and then kicking off like yeah i just think that it's better to be like i wasn't yeah i mean i wasn't yelling at the guy i wasn't like fuck yeah i was just like that's fucking stupid like i wasn't that <laughs> but uh yeah i've never been i never gotten mad that way before with no no but like again it was you know everything you talk about i mean, i used to get a lot at the shop too when i worked there you know people come in and you know they spent like 250 dollars in goggles and they haven't worked you know, and then they've spent one hundred sixty dollars on a ski ticket, and, hasn't worked and then and then their kids are you know, and their kids are mad at them because they've had a shitty day too. Right. So literally, this one guy has like all these different things going at him, and all he can vent to is me, right, standing behind the desk, and it's like the best thing you can do is like, hey, I totally get where you're coming from. That's like the best thing yeah. you can say to somebody is like, hey, I understand gotcha. empathy, right? You know, yeah. like I, I'm I'm one hundred percent behind you. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be an asshole here, right? I'm. Empathy goes a long way, man. People like being like um, understanding and not, I mean, assumptions can lead to it. Just when you assume someone's, or you just assume that you're right, or you assume that what they're talking about is trivial. When it's like that thing, like, so I've worked in the restaurant industry for a long time. And if you, it's the same thing. People come in, so you have a hundred guests. Let's say you have a hundred guests in one day. Hopefully more if you're trying to be a successful business. But if you have a hundred guests in one day and they come in, they ask you um, a question or they make some stupid joke about something that's all, people always make a joke about something, right? The same joke. So they come in your store, there's something that cues a joke. It's always the same joke. You're like, I fucking heard this a million times. This guy's like, I just made a funny joke. And the guy behind him, I made a funny joke. No one knows that you're fucking it's, it's like the ways, doorbell, right? Totally. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, it's hard in the moment to accept that that's not their fault. Totally. But you're still like, I'm gonna fucking trust from you at the fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> Like, yeah. I, I totally yeah and I, I used to think about you know having maybe like a difficult customer somebody who's just like literally that 5% we were saying they're just assholes I think it's more but yeah and, and I, okay <laughs> yeah I um I, I, I whenever I was working the store I worked there for so long I kind of just got used to it and I used to be able to have fun with it too right well, that's good then good. no well not to a point where you'd be able to like why being able to be like work and, and ask them like what, what's going on what's why are you mad like what's what's happening today like and you know and that you become like this like like a psychologist a little bit right but what, but what that does is it sets a tone for the next person coming in right who is literally just walk through the door as that person's left and they have no idea what's just happened and you're like oh fuck here we Repeat. go I, I got i got a wife or like a family with a you know the kids are running around and you know what they were normally like the nicest people you talk to when yeah. were, and, and that was the hardest thing for me was being able to reset and go again right and you'd start off and they come ask you questions you'd be like super blunt you know and you're like what do you want pretty much you know <laughs> you scared today cool you need some goggles yeah, yeah. and that's and that's and that's the thing where it's like it's very hard to kind of right he's like yeah my kid shit in my goggles this morning i can't clean them classic <laughs> a one year old <laughs> no i was gonna say dude's like 17 he needs to learn right that's not on you know <laughs> <laughs> thought it was funny now i my, my face smells like shit yeah, that didn't happen. Clearly. I can't see shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. I get a lot. So I mean, you can't. That's, funny. that's the joke. So that's the kind of shit that people. That joke could be yeah. said a hundred times. You like, totally. heard it. Yeah. yeah. And I, right. one of the biggest things is people come in. They be like, no, "I'm a very confident skier." And you're like, cool. "I'm confident you're not." Yeah. And, no, but like, I usually ski like black runs. And you're like, "All right, okay." And then they'd be like, "And I couldn't see anything today." And you're like, "Cool, it's Christmas night. Neither could thirty thousand other people." Right? You couldn't. You couldn't see because the people were in front of you. Yeah, yeah. And it's like everybody can see shit, right? Everyone thinks that like we were getting very ski centric here, but summer centric. But I feel like everyone thinks that the goggles, like. They don't clear the fog. No, they don't part the sea. And that's like you're a, not that's, like that's the hardest conversation with people. It's like you got to explain them. I like, can't see. People, nobody can see up there. Everybody's skiing around, just like. Are these gonna help me ski better? No, no, they're not. No, they're not at all. No, nope. I mean, 
No. I think I think stuff's getting better, but it's not like if it's foggy and wide out and cloudy, you're fucked. Yep. Everybody is. Like, um, my my roommate Adam, he's been on the podcast before. He uh, he's got these goggles that he got from, I think Spy uh, and Oakley, Spy, and they yeah. change color. Yep. So you can change the intensity of the of the uh, whatever the fuck it means, the intensity of the shade. So like the um, what's the word or the term? Pretty much like the the percentage of light that gets through. Sure. So opacity, opac- opacity, is sure. yeah, whatever the fuck right. it is. Anyway, it makes them darker or lighter, and totally. you can see better. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, not but you still can't see if it's foggy. And so I think, and that's you know, like, like it's not, it stops the sun. Yeah. But if it's like you can't see the forest for the trees, because the trees are in front of your eyes. Yep. It's the same thing with these goggles. I don't know. I think one of the, one of the biggest things is people are trying to find like <laughs> there's always an excuse. And uh, sometimes isn't always. Oh, the edges! Somebody tuned my skis wrong, and I'll keep catching so, an edge. So, 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 yeah. Somebody, Adam, skied my or my. You know, tune my, yeah, he tuned my skis, and they're running too fast, and the edges are too sharp. I'm literally skewing like Mac Ten everywhere. Right? It was kind of pretty. Oh, backseat. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> yeah, man. But that the, happened. The, the, that that opening day, like that first day, I was literally like, I cannot keep up with these things. It was pretty funny. Could you imagine if like? When you like new tires for your car, <laughs> it made it like that. People, like it'd, it'd be brutal, yeah, be yeah. all over the place. It'd be so funny. Right. Whoa. Well, I wonder what the equivalent is. So, like, we talk about it. we're in a ski town, but I wonder if you live in like in the city, and you. What, uh, this is gonna be a dead end here. I think I'm dragging us down a hole here. Uh, what, like, what's the equivalent of tuning skis in the city? Yeah, like oiling your chain of your bike. Maybe probably tune your bike. I guess right. We get new new shoes. <laughs> I love shoes. Yeah, yeah. New shoes are sweet, actually. Yeah, yeah. I should get a new pair of shoes soon. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got tons of shoes actually. I got two. I got two pairs for the price of one. From New Balance as well. Yeah, right. That's Tell cool. the story before. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, like if you live in the city, you're like, oh, I got the sickest new tires for my bike. I'm fucking go through you, rain. You go know, through human feces on the street. If it, you know, if I was gonna bring it to climate a little bit. And talk about like everything. Oh, that's, you know, that's your shoes. Up. Like, have you ever got your shoes re-rubbered? No. Can you can do that, right? Can the only reason it? I haven't done it is because they smell so fucking bad. But you can get your you shoes re-rubbered. Yeah, yeah, but I I go through climbing shoes like every six months, six months to a year, depending on what brand they are. Climbing but, shoes fucking stink from the yeah, like, yeah, yeah, day one. But um, you know, climbers. I, I so my one of my favorite stories is being at. Uh, you ever you ever, ever ever go try Easy Chair? One of the boulders in Squamish. So it's like a, it's like an iconic like Squamish boulder problems V three V four. Been in that that Viper pit or something? Or Viper? Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit yeah, it's a little bit past that. But, okay, uh, right. They, I was with a guy and I was just by myself. I had, had like a couple of mats and I went and dropped in on these. It was like a, a guy and his girlfriend were looks things, and uh, so the guy's there and he's trying this thing. He's like, oh, these shoes are shit, and he's trying this problem because it's all on this left heel hook. You right. pretty much just like work your way along this kind right. of like heel hooks like this, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much, you put your you put your <laughs> put your heel on. You and put you hook your it on. heel on the rock. You hook you your hook heel it. on. The That's exactly <laughs> what it means. Yeah, sorry. But so this this guy is blaming his shoes. He's like, oh man, I hit these shoes. Right. His girlfriend's like, oh, well, you got your you know your five tens in the truck. Maybe you should go get those. And he's like. Yeah, it's a good call, babe. It's a good yeah, call. Double super. shoe program. So I'm, I'm literally like lapping this thing, right? And this guy, he's getting super, super pissed off. So he goes away and he gets his other shoes and he comes back and he still falls off at the same bit. And I'm just like, so if it wasn't the shoes, what's the issue, right? And I love watching people fall off stuff because if there's usually like no excuse, then, you know, they're pretty decent, you know, because they, right. just, cause they just fell off because they fell off. That's, that, that's what happens. But you watch people and they're like, oh, chalk's not working today or you know like oh, I didn't bring my good chalk with, you know, or my shoes aren't it's too greasy it's too humid and you're like oh it's shit greasy. Uh, but that's yeah. like that same thing always there's, there's people are you're just weak or you, you can just calm down and not be there's, there's like a, there's, a cli- there's like a pull up bar the grind up climbing your or shoes just and, uh, like people I think it's an image thing like yeah. you're trying to seem like you know what you're doing and just having a bad day yeah and people and people you're be, just a bad like you just haven't practiced enough. Yeah, you know? and I, I think that um, get nice pants. Yeah, with like a rubber band. The gray ones. From, yeah, yeah, yeah they dude, those are sick. Dude, those pants. I gotta buy those. I need to climb. Uh, yeah, like total poser. No, not even. A, I think it's okay to pose, but you're okay with it. But oh, sorry, I keep interrupting. But I feel like the thing is like 
your the superficial side of things like when people are like i gotta do skis so i can ski better i got these things so i can do better and i need a better car so i can drive better i need these things and you're like no you gotta put at some point at some point sure they do make a difference mm-hmm. if your rubber is off your shoes and your toe sticking out you can use sure. better shoes and you can't yeah. climb properly but if you have two pairs of shoes and one's for different things, they're both brand new, you're probably like, get the fuck. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, um, I think that's where, I think like companies kind of play on this a little bit too, right? Where they can be like, okay, we got the new and best kind of thing that's going to solve everything for you. All those issues you've been having, all those problems, all those climbs you can't do, this is the shoe for you. Dude. And then they get it and then they're like, oh, I still can't do it. You know? It drives me nuts, man. I mean, I've, I've worked in that industry for a long time, like mm. I would wear stuff like that and everything else and clothing and I'm like, man, yeah, it's different. And so, I mean, some of these companies make great things. They make incredible stuff. Of course. And then there's no denying about and that. So, and there's stuff that will be made better, but that's not for your everyday, everyday kind of person, right? There's no. for the boys. And there are a few like, companies who promote don't buy it all the time, you know, repair mm-hmm. things, that kind of stuff. There are a few that are really good at that. Not many, but um, promote it. But just having the shit. Mm. Like, it's I a know, big thing. I know gear guys who are good at what they do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. gear guys who don't do shit. Yeah. They're bad with you, but they love gear. Which, I feel like the, the, the sales rep thing. <laughs> it's like, I feel like the sales rep guys are like, when you're a sales rep, when you work for like a brand. Say it. I know exactly what you want me but to you're, say you're, it. You That's the, the guys <laughs> that couldn't make it, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm a marketing guy. I'm Because I, I can't ski, so I market skiing. But I mean, but I now I market weed, but I, and I can smoke weed. But yeah, if you can't make it, you're like, I'm a rep. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of great people who are reps, but totally stop having the best shit. It doesn't matter. I totally. mean, I guess you get a deal on it, so it's cool and all, but it's not, it doesn't define you. And there's, it there, there, and there's a lot of great reps that I know who are actually badass at what they do. Of course. And I, and I love that. They're the ones you respect, the ones you're the cool. Totally. And it's the brands that they <clears throat> represent are the best. And it's like, and those brands do well in your store. You know, you think about Miles. Dude was like, you know, free, uh, free Shout style. Shout out to Miles yeah, Miles uh, like, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Like, like Oakley rap. He crushes. Rap, you know, Black Carl. Crow. Yeah, exactly. Those boys, are, they're all great at what they do. Oh, yeah, right. So whenever you talk to them, you have this like real kind of like conversation about what's actually happening. Mm-hmm. And then you talk to other reps and you're like, you have no idea, dude, what's going on. And it sucks because it's not their, f- I mean, maybe it's not their fault, but especially if you're new, but I feel like uh, there are gear nerds who just love gear. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? They might not be good at the sport, but if you want advice on gear, they might know exactly how to use and it. Again, and again, but they won't. We're use sitting it here like we're we're experts. high and mighty. Yeah, like I don't. I, think, I don't know shit, everyone. Exactly, none of it. Yeah. Like, I, and I think that's that's. But we don't care. I don't know shit. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't I, care. And I, I don't care. You know. I care I, a bit, I, but not that much. No, like whenever it comes to, I, I felt like the biggest thing for me is like whenever you just don't care what anybody else thinks. Right. Yeah. There's like four Rubik's cubes in this house. And I can't finish one of them. <laughs> I have I have cool Rubik's cubes, but I can't finish a single one. Yeah, like. I tons I, of books I don't read. I I don't talk like I'm the best, and I don't like like. And I think my your actions speak a lot louder than your words do. And I and I never ever judge somebody based on their performance at any time. I think like everybody like because I've come from like not being able to ski at all, right? And right. not that I'm saying I'm good, but I've got a lot better. And it's yeah, like, good man. Uh, yeah, but like it's more you never be somebody like one of my best stories was a guy, uh, a climber, young guy, Matty Travis. And Matty was you know he was a little bit weird, a little bit antisocial. I right first met him. He was like sixteen. Twice a climber, and, but now he's like one of the. He's <laughs> such a climber. A, yeah, he's so good. Cause he didn't talk to anybody. Totally. He's like fuck. I'm but no, do but it. not even that. He's just like he went from being like really kind of purr to being really good. Right. Over like maybe two or three years, but the guy never give up, right? And that's the thing. You always kind of fall with it. And climbing is a sport that you can't give an inch if you want to get better. You yeah. can't stop, and you can't like. In my novice experience climbing. And, and trying it and knowing this is issues like you you can't you can't give it up you can't give it an inch you got to keep trying every time you got every little every little second of hanging on longer yeah, yeah. it all counts something I, I think the biggest thing that for me is what i tell people like you, you whenever you first start you really know how to try hard you know, like everything's a fight. Everything's yeah, a you're just you hanging know, like, on. Totally, literally, you're by your fingertips. As you literally get, I, as you get better, you kind of lose that a bit. Right. You know, you're doing a climb and something doesn't quite work out, you know? And like, whenever we were down at that comp the other week, and like, literally, you go at it, balls to the wall, until you f- fucking either fall off or you reach the top, right. right? And that's and that's where the biggest thing I've learned over the past couple of years is there's a there's a difference between, you know, climbing hard, like, well, sorry, not climbing hard and trying hard, but like, 
you know, people falling off and making an excuse or did you actually really try hard? Did you really dig, like, you know, was it to the point where you were like at your limit? Like, the, from Well, the climbing is weird because climbing is like when you try hard, you could pull a tendon in your finger trying hard. Very true. Yeah, yeah. So it's like people have this, like, most people are like, I can't open the pickle jar. And you try hard, but you, you're not trying to the point where you break your wrist pushing so hard because you just feel like you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could hang on to something with like one or two fingers or I guess twist, whatever, and those two ones where you put your, just so you guys know I'm using a hold here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to well, put, well, and, have, and you pull a tendon that. just yeah, cause, yeah. because you can hang on that long because your tendons will create the tension. Yeah. But your mu- it can't, your muscles can't so support one, one of the, Yeah, so I had a, like, a, like a finger pocket like this and this is why I caused this injury was like it actually slipped. Right. And I kind of tried to readjust and I'll never forget, like I got a shooting pain through my palm and down my arm, like everything. It was like, yeah. It's so, all attached. And it, yeah, and, it, and again, I think injury is part of any sport, you know? I think right. I climb injuries and that's all part of it and skiing, you know? and Injuries are fucked, dude. And it, it but I, it, for me, it was like, it's almost like a rite of passage almost, you know? Like I was like, well, I've got my first tendon injury. It's not great, but you know, I was like 20, 21 or something like that. And I was like, I got, you know, plenty of time to get over this, you I know? Think, I think there's like, it's like the, the war war battles, right? It, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, it, totally. It, it, you get respect for... Yeah, you don't find it, but you just got to let it heal and it's, um, you know, it's part of the, the rite of passage to go through to maybe... And it, it is, but... but, but yeah. What will you learn from that then is you kind of know where your your weaknesses are a little bit right. too, right? Totally. Because you know? I would I would have felt like I was unstoppable at that stage. You know, I was right. climbing hard and everyone was great and then, yeah, and then you finger... Blue injury, digit. And, yeah. And then you're like, you're out for six weeks. At well, least, yeah, you know, so happens. Man, like when I fell on my mountain bike a couple weeks or a couple months ago, I thought they broke my wrist or my thumb, and then I was like, I did, like I fell off my bike, and everything was covered in dirt except the hand that was broken. So I'm like, well, how did this happen? I don't have yeah, no yeah. fucking clue. I fell in the dirt, and I'm like, well, and then you just get back on your bike, and you just have to like assume it's not going to happen again. Yeah, I, it will, I, but you have to put it on your brain. You know, there's. <laughs> There, there's so many different aspects like and, and I find that there's people who go through their climbing careers or whatever and they're perfectly fine mm-hmm. but then there's a lot of people who go through who are extremely talented who are just non-stop injured you know or like they've always right. had issues and it's it's for me like the people I've kind of met it's the people who are the most humble who kind of roll with those punches you know right. and kind of really appreciate you know they're like well okay this has happened you know but yeah, like there's there's a couple of guys I climb with that the I grind up and they're like you know uh, Matt had to go to physio because he just had like a niggle in his in his shoulder and like the bottom of his neck for for a while right mm-hmm. and now he's like well I'm out for a bit you know like it's yeah it, 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 I think you know it's it is what it is you know <laughs> it is what it is it's like that time when I was like when I had tendonitis when I got tendonitis in my hands mm-hmm. you just got like for climbers I mean you get it but you just can't use your hands no. Well, you have to stop using them for until it goes away. Yeah. And so the, these pains are like. I, one of the, one of the biggest things people used to come up and say, oh, I've got like real pain in my elbow, like right here. And yeah. You get like a lot, like like a tennis elbow or. Let's uh, stop using it. Elbow. Yeah, it's just you're not warming up probably. Yeah. Usually that was that was the thing, and yeah. I, I used to get a little bit too. But again, you learn from it, right? You know. Yep. So. Or you don't. Yeah. Or you don't. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Injuries yeah. are like. Uh, well, some people don't get injured much, and when they do, they get fucking worked. I know, and that's usually the, you get yeah. small ones, and you're like, okay, and you get confidence, and you get, and you don't know how to fall. Like yeah, as a yeah. kid, you do do things, um, whatever it is you do, you fall. You don't get hurt as much when you're a kid. You get cut and bruised, every break your hand, is it? But those catastrophic injuries happen, I would guess, when people are older. But when like those skateboarders, right? All those skateboarders with the skateboard kids, like. You, when you're young and you learn to fall, skateboarding is a high consequence sport, mm. in, my, in my opinion, as far as falling on cement, pressing hand. But if you learn to fall, you you can minimize that yeah, yeah. massive injury. But if you never fall because you either don't try or you're just gifted somehow, and you have that one day where shit goes a little bit sideways, and, and you fall and you're like, totally. everything's broken. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah. You know, and I think about the amount of times that I've fallen or I've, you know, done stupid stuff, and it's like, like being able to like walk away from something you know and then you hear these stories of like the, the guy that falls down three like two or three steps and he like breaks his neck and you're like well the amount of stupid stuff I used to do like you know how, yeah. how was I never that bad but you know? no one you don't practice that no very true like well, you could I mean if you're a stunt man I think that people teach you how to ski they teach them how to skate or they teach them how to serve there should be like an hour of each class on how to wipe out Tuck and roll. Yeah, yeah. 
let just don't fight it let it go let it just like, right yeah yeah when i fell on my bike last time i remember i was like, holy shit i just threw an elbow to the ground or shoulder the ground because i was i would have done this otherwise and probably just broken fingers uh, off in the trees broken, yeah. so you get a bit of an idea of it but um i have a super big fear of falling now but you know what freaks me out the most is like when you're watching like instagram or jerry the day and these wipeouts you're like those people aren't alive anymore They're i'm like why are you filming this yeah, yeah, yeah. like the person clearly is compromised for the rest of their life in some level or they're not there. Yeah, they got yeah. murdered to death by that accident, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> like, I don't understand that. That And there's so many websites, or so many Instagram channels that do that. Cook Slams and Jerry the Day and... Yeah, like, oh, Jerry the Day, this day sucks. Uh, have you seen... Do you have this, kids the, getting hurt, you ever Yes, that Get Sandy. Get Sandy. Kids getting hurt, actually. So kids getting hurt is one of the funniest things because but well, some of these kids get really hurt. I know. Like when the dad kicks the soccer ball and they fucking cartwheel into the bushes because they hit him in the face. That's a scene. That's That kid's fucked up. Or like two cars collide and one disappears upside down in the bushes or whatever. That's a scene. Like yeah, why are you yeah. putting that on fucking Instagram? Yeah, yeah. And then people are like, people are like, boom. They put like comments like fire, like 100%. You're totally making light of someone just totally died. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit weird. We're just watching, we're just watching snuff films on Instagram. You know, snuff sure. film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's about sniff, like, sniff films? Sniff. How much people just do drugs around the table? Just doing blow all the time? <laughs> yeah. I'd watch that. I would watch that. I'd probably watch that too. If you had, like a, if you had a YouTube channel, just like a live webcam, if you are doing coke, you just watch the crazy <laughs> shit go on, be like getting all excited, freaking out. And watch what happens after too, right? You know, that would be the, oh, that'd man. Be the story. That'd be the longest video wouldn't stop. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. I think that... Learning how to fall is... It's huge. In- integral, yeah. integral, whatever you want to say it. Sure. Yeah. But um, I mean, climbing clearly, you fall, if you're bouldering, you fall, depending on, if you're outdoor bouldering, you probably could fall quite high or from the yeah, quite high. Yeah. Indoor bouldering, is there like um, a certified height in indoor bouldering? I don't think so. It's like, just kind of like. Within 12 feet probably. Yeah. I think like the height of ground up, you know, it's pretty similar to the height of the gym at just, yeah. In the UK, I used to climb up, you know, so. Well, you can jump from the top and still be fine. Yeah, it's not good for you. I guess when I've started to climb a lot more, just to try and watch my knees and stuff like that, because oh, yeah. it'll drain your knees for well, sure. Well, you climb, like, all the time, so. Yeah, yeah. I want to jump up, it looks cool. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. And it, I think I blew an ankle. Was it superhero landing? Yeah, dude, I was at the core, the core local climbing gym in Whistler. It's kind of, it's pretty good. It's all right. We've, we've talked about a lot, but anyway. Uh I watched a girl jump from the top and then just watched her ankle pretty much. Oh, yeah. I can, the bottom of her foot twisted up and pointed the roof pretty much. It yeah, was yeah. brutal. And she was like, whoa. And I was like, oh, my God. I was over like. It wasn't Jess, was it? No. I don't know who it was. Apparently, it happened It, ha- it happened twice that day to, s- to somebody else. And I was I was lifting all the weights in the gym. Like, everyone there was there. I was lifting it. And, uh, yeah, this girl, I had a scream. Yeah. I mean, I was like, ah, oh, and then you can It happens. Because it's a soft mat. So if you yeah. land on the side, the mat gives, but your foot then just fucking fall. Oh, yeah. dude. The scream was crazy. But yeah, I know. It's it's like, it's got to be a good drop because 12 feet, I mean, even two feet could fuck you up. But. You know, I, I guess I think sometimes those, those, you know, whenever you're doing like a last move, you know, it can be a little bit scary sometimes. But I think she just jumped yeah. down as she was done. Yeah. Just dropped. Well, you know? it's even worse, you know. I don't know. Yeah, I try, I try and down climb as much as I can now to try and avoid that. But you ever been in a, you ever been in a cast? Uh, Sorry, knock on wood. Yeah, not not yet. No, not for legs. You've never been in a cast. No, it's, uh, for my um, so I broke my hand like right here. Yeah, Sp- playing playing soccer actually. Oh really? Um, football. Yeah, fo- football. Classic bit of football. I was, football. I was actually at the front of my house playing my brothers. Yeah, and then uh, I'd, I was talking to the, the goalkeeper, and then I was like, my brother shouted, "Watch out!" And I turned around. And the football was like right here, so quick and it went like this. I put my hand up like, like like this, like <laughs> like, a, like a fin. And what, what happened is the the, the football hit my, hit my oh. hand and like and then it crushed it up against my forehead, right? Oh wow! So I kind of like and my brother came up. He's like, "You alright?" I'm like, "Ah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine." And then we kind of called it after that. So we went back into the house. We we're playing like PlayStation One or something at the time. Right? PlayStation One. Yeah, I think it's uh, called PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation. Playing the PlayStation, the original. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I put my hand on my knee. Yeah. Like, just sitting chilling, and I looked down and like swollen, like. Oh, like, dude. Yeah, crazy. You know. It's funny how you just yeah. don't feel it, eh? Yeah. So and then I yeah and after that I went to the hospital and like yeah you broke your middle finger and burst the blood vessel and they put me in a cast for that. Oh, so you were in a so, cast? Yeah, but that's yeah. that's the only one I think. 
Yeah, I broke had, my collarbone a couple of times. Like putting like a figure eight for that eight with a figure eight brace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was fun. Yeah, fucking breaking shit, man. I don't know. Like a cast is brutal. I had a, I had a cast on. I thought my hand was broken. It wasn't broken, but I wore a cast for three weeks. So I just couldn't. It was recent too. Yeah, just, so it feels like the idea that your hand is fine mm. never was broken. So your confidence is there. Yeah. But it's like a fucking noodle because it's been in a cast for three weeks. Yeah, yeah. I've been using. Yeah. Yeah. I've I had them. both. I've had my hands, both my hands in cast twice. Not at the same time? Uh, Almost. I broke both my thumbs at the same time. I was, I got mad. So I was, I, I no. forgot my ski pass. We're ski, you live in ski town. I forgot my ski pass at home. Mm-hmm. So I was to get on the chairlift and they're like, I'm like, fuck, I forgot. So I went into the guest relations. I was like, hey, Ooh. there's Ryan. Forgot my shit. You passed. Yeah, like, yeah. They were like, can't give you one. You got to go here. I'm like, what? So I kind of got mad. I was like, I, you have them right. I can see them. Like they're right there. You can yeah, make yeah. me one. I couldn't get back because I worked anyway. So they finally got. Do you, do you have to go to the um, Springs building? Yeah, or for something? sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. But as I came walking with my friends, I my ski poles in my hands, and they, your thumbs are kind of like this. Mm. And I fucking wiped out the ice, <laughs> put both my hands down, and I broke this thumb, and I skeered, and I sprained this thumb. So this thumb ended up in a cast. Yeah. This thumb ended up in a splint. Cool. All because I don't know if I, I don't know because I don't know if I wiped out because I was mad and I was walking fast and I was in ski boots and ski boots and ice or like or oil and They're water, not cool. or if I just wiped out like I could have anybody. But yeah, they were in there. I think this one was in the cast. Like a week, I took it out right away. I was like, "Fuck, I can't have two hands at a cast. Like I'm fucked." So, but yeah, I never really had. Uh, I've had a bunch of casts for sure. Neck neck casts. Uh, no, no leg casts. Cool. My nose has been in a cast. Yeah, but I haven't done anything else. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you'd, uh... You ever uh, had an operation? No. No? No operations nope. ever? Don't think so. Uh, like nothing? Remember. No. Like, no. <laughs> like dental operations? Like no teeth pulled? No, no, no. no. no, no. Fuck, man. Who are you like a... You're an anomaly in our lifetime. I, I think so, yeah. I'm one of the five uh, percent that's actually an asshole. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't, you're probably not an asshole because karma hasn't got you with an well, operation not, yet. Not yet, right? You know, so look forward. It's going to be bad, though. How many have I had? One, two, three, two, three, four. Up, you, three, four. What, you had like your appendix out one time. And then My that, appendix that, out? That day I dropped you to the airport. It was like, what, like two or three days after. Oh, right. You yeah, dropped me yeah, to the airport. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my appendix out. Uh, and you can't like hobble. Got I went with to Nicaragua like three days yeah, later. He got into the truck. He's like, oh. Dude, I was. Okay, Pete, see you later. So Thanks for, for that. So for the appendix. So <laughs> it didn't burst, but I was here and my roommate graciously drove me to the, air, to the hospital. I had booked my flight to Nicaragua that, that morning and my appendix almost burst that night. Uh, so my roommate took me to the hospital and they're like, hey, we got to take it to Vancouver. Just precautionary. We know it's your appendix and it could burst. And if it does, you're fucked. And if it doesn't, we have to take it out. So they took me to Vancouver. I took an ambulance ride. I was like, fine. Like I was like just chilling. I mean, I was hurt, but they gave me so much morphine. It was great. But uh, I was super drugged up. But I got in the, in the ambulance, casual drive to Vancouver, like an hour and a half, whatever. Vancouver General Hospital, they put me in there. And then I got postponed because some guy got shot in the chest. And I was like, cool, that's fine. I didn't, shouldn't have heard that conversation, but I, the guy, doctor was way too close. He's a casual doctor. Just a casual one. Yeah, he's like, like, yeah, we got a he's, gunshot to the chest. He's got his own shirt and stuff yeah. on, like casual friends. Shot gun the <laughs> Yeah. So he's got his jeans on. Yeah, he's got a big, so he, uh, shirt and tie. He's like, you postpone. I'm like, whatever, man. He's like, yeah, you'll be fine. I'm like, cool. So they postpone me. And then operation, super non invasive. Like these, like telescopic, I don't know, like telescopic, I don't know what the fuck it is. Laparoscopic surgery, it's called. Sorry, mm. not telescopic. What the fuck? Um, they go through your belly button and then two other spots. And they, one's a camera, one's a knife, and one's a, I got a bag on the end, like a condom or something. They put sure. It in. Just put it all in there. Break yeah, it. so they cut it off and they put it in there. But it was like, I guess it was behind my gallbladder. It took a bit of time. Anyway, super non-invasive. But they pump gas into your ba- into your abdomen. So it looks like you're going you to you you <laughs> fart, like, you're going to fart, like, blow off the, half the wall of your house. Yeah. So you have this kind of big gut and they're giving you painkillers. So you're constipated because the painkillers and you got a big gut because you're full of gas. And I'm, I'm going to get on a plane. So when you drove me to the airport, I was like, I was taking painkillers and felt so bloated and just fucked up and the last place you should have been known was a plan right yeah they're you like know? they're like don't go to nicaragua i'm like cool the nurse goes to me you could probably go the doctor's like don't go. i'm like hey doc i told him the situation he's like yeah you probably shouldn't go i'm like cool the nurse goes My, just don't do anything i'm like i'm going yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> i mean how many years of med school did you have yeah so yeah when you drop me off though 
I was kind of, I wasn't really in pain, but then when I, I got the food into LAX, you're pretty bad. I was, I was laying on the ground, like yeah. gobbled over and playing, gobbled over in pain. <laughs> so I was gobbled over, gobbled over and playing. But, uh, yeah, I went to Nicaragua and then I think I got an infection and then I surfed and I yeah. came home early and, but operations. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I've had my face worked on and I've had all my wisdom teeth pulled. I've had implants. Yeah. I've had my, you know what an adenoid is? This is, I don't want to fuck this. This we must be having a boring podcast, but an adenoid is like, it's in your nose. Um, and I had really bad allergies when I, when I was a kid and younger. So I guess they, they, I went to the hospital and they took it out. They take your adenoids out. I think it's somewhere in your face behind your nasal passage, whatever it is, but it grows back over time. But I was so young. I used to, I would just cry and they wouldn't do the surgery. So I had to keep going back. My parents were like, just stop fucking crying. Like go to the hospital. I'd be like, wow, they would take me home. But yeah, I've had a few operations, but nothing like crazy. I mean, well, no, the serious, cat- I've had some serious, I mean, yeah. I have my I have metal plates in my face, but, uh, that's pretty crazy. My buddy Jeff had to get his thumb kind of reattached. Like, but mm. I feel like most people in their lives, like I must be, I don't know if I'm accident prone, but you do the same things that I do. Basically mm. you climb, you climb a ton. It's funny how people can get through doing things that I do or maybe I'm just bad at things. I think it maybe it's not to a point maybe just get, I just get lucky sometimes. Sure, man. You know, you know right? I'll, yeah, I'll rule with that because it's you know I luck. Think. Yeah, no, I'm not. A, not Is a, it lady luck? Is that what they say? Sure. Right. That's a good. Yeah, lady. Mr. Luck. Yeah, Mr. Luck. I'm right. Mr. Luck. Lady Luck's on your side. That's what it is. Yeah. They say that to you. Right? I don't know. I think that's yeah. Luck of the Irish. Luck of the Irish. Yeah. That's a thing, right? Cause yeah. It's because it's, it's, it's leprechauns. Yeah, but it's more. It's it's actually you know, it's actually a bad thing. Are there more rainbows in Ireland than there are other places because of that? No. Oh. There's not. Um, Do you know that? Because I was home recently. <laughs> There's no rainbows. I, 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 you didn't, you didn't see that many. <laughs> Did it rain? Was oh, it rainy and sunny? Uh, yeah. It was, no, it wasn't too bad, actually. It was pretty good. You know, <laughs> it wasn't bad. But, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, what's, what were we just saying? Like, uh, luck of the Irish. Yeah, so it's... Um, you know, when you talk about the famine, it's luck of the Irish, where it's actually a bad thing. You know, like a negative... It's not like oh, oh yeah, Irish, I guess you know, right. You know, so it's like luck of the Irish. It's always like. So then, why do they? Why is it now that people see it as a good thing? I'm, I'm not. I luck, I'm, oh, your lucky charms. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 don't know, I just remember reading it somewhere, and it was like kind of. Yeah, because yeah, like, is it fucking potato famine, right? Yeah. This is gonna sound super naive and probably ignorant. No. Um, but the potato famine. Because <laughs> you had, they had to eat potatoes. That was all they had. Yeah. The potatoes went bad. And they yeah, didn't have potatoes. Pretty much. So you only had potatoes. There was this, like the, the... So what was it from? What happened? There was a... Um, like a uh, virus or like yeah, a bug? Yeah, like, like a disease in the potatoes. What was it called? The Wait a minute. The plight or like a fucking like... Plague? The black plague? No, it was like, I don't know. Pretty much anyway, it just affected the whole... So potatoes went bad. Yep, and we had nothing else. You had nothing? Nothing, uh, no. Oh, really? There's, there's stories like, you know, people eating grass, you know, like... People on what? farms like eating grass because they had nothing. Because that's what the, that's what our soul. Is <laughs> food. Sorry, I don't, this is. I'm so no, sorry. No, 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 no. But, it's but you didn't have like carrots. You didn't have anything like no, this. No, no. What about like no cows? Right. You couldn't kill a cow. No, because then there wasn't like yeah. I don't think it was. And this is before your time. Clearly, I yeah, know yeah. this, but um. But so like it was one of the reasons why there's so many Irish in like America. Because they pieced out. Because they pieced out. Give me, give me on that fucking yeah, boat. You know. Right. And uh, there was um yeah it was it, it's it's affected the Irish population for. I still hasn't recovered from it, you know. Like it's still really I mean, must have been a that. bunch of people that got boat disease. <laughs> Man, it was it was horrible, you know. And I think that kind of played into the whole kind of because um, there's very little support from the UK, you know, from England. And everything the fucking else. UK, man. Yeah, yeah, Fuck. Spirit, you know, Brits. But like, yeah, but like it's um, it was just a pretty horrible time for you guys are neighbors, pretty Ireland. much. We are, but I don't think we get on so much. Well, I don't care. Like, well, you don't live there. No, it's like it's in the U.S. right now. Yeah, a hard exactly. time with yeah, and I, I don't care about the U.S. either. Yeah, because they're over that way. They are that way. I think they are that actually that way. Yeah, yeah. I think that's south. Makes sense. I'm not sure, but I think they are. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, well, Levitt's that way anyway. Yeah, yeah. And he had some too. Yeah, uh, relations from country to country. Mm-hmm. So is Ireland a friendly country with like. Scotland and the, and the UK and yeah. France and you guys are all get along. So no, I think like the Irish are pretty friendly. You're friendly them. people for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. Same with Scottish. But it's yeah, same with Scottish. Same with Welsh as well. If you're if you're so, but Welsh is a country on its own. Yeah, or is it a, Wales? It is. Mm-hmm. It's not like a 
It's not part of the so UK. It's, it's, but it's all part of the UK, right? So England, United Scotland. United Kingdom, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so so England, it's not part of England. England, Scotland, and Wales, Northern Ireland are all part of the United Kingdom. But they're kind of governed by their own kind of smaller governments or you know they've got their own uh, locally elected politicians are you part of the EU for now no. but that's that's what Brexit's all about right? that's just for England though isn't it no nope, so would affect the whole United Kingdom yeah. the whole UK is going to leave mm. oh that's what so it is like, yeah yeah so but again so like one of the biggest deciding there's a party in Northern Ireland called the DUP who backed England dupe dupe the dupe <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's the, my my biggest That's a thing. Bad name right away. Yeah, Dup, I guess. Again, it's it's one of those things where <laughs> every time I, everybody I talked to, it was like, oh, we're not really too sure what's going on, and we'll not really know until it happens. Right. And so the, the whole country's kind of like just up in the air at the moment, like with everything that's gonna be coming through in the next. It's, it takes so long for that shit to happen. Oh right? man, I don't know. Like it's and people like I, you know. Speaking of that, sorry, the the the, um, the issue in France right now, where they're having like riots and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff because um, because globalization and everything else. Well, the price of what's the price of fuel in Ireland? You were just there recently. Uh, yeah, it's pretty expensive. I it's, it's like five bucks, or seven bucks a gallon in France right now, or something like that. Yeah, and it's you know probably close. I'm sure it's the same around the UK. So it's like uh, one, maybe let's say one forty, maybe. A liter. liter, you know. Because you guys go liters there, right? Mm-hmm. I was watching the American news and they fucking do it all weird. Yeah, with well, all gallons and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Only country. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Like they must. They just maybe just start with using barrels of gas. <laughs> go. Like, how many barrels? How many bar- How much is the barrel of gas? <laughs> fucking idiots. Yeah. <laughs> See, Sorry, that that's one. rude. Oh, they're not idiots. Yeah, they're all great people. It's okay, they're not listening to this. It's anyway. got a fucking orange for a president. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> a rotten orange. So my, my, my but, you know, to kind of. <laughs> There's a lot of issues everywhere. Right. And there's... For sure there is. Regardless of where you are and where you're living, there's always something. Of and, I, and I've... I, like I've, Not that I've traveled a lot, I've traveled a bit, but like it's more about understanding people's point of views being in that scenario and being mm-hmm. living there and being completely engrossed <laughs> by it. I totally get it. But like right. whenever, whenever people try and talk to me about it, I'm like, I honestly don't care. I'm really sorry. Like, I'm, uh, it's yeah. because like, I don't live, like I'm not, I'm not there all the time. Right. You know, in like, Ireland specifically, me, 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 Ireland, yeah, with, yeah. With like all the kind of whole thing that goes on with religion. Most things. Thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess it's, it's how far removed you are from them. It makes you how, decides kind of how relative it is in your life if you unless you decide to make it a point to be part of it totally and so if I, it's like well, if it affects if, you if, once if, a month you're like that's a once a month issue for me if, if it was something like that though i would still be there you know if i was still wanting to be right. a part of that then if i felt felt strongly about it you know I, my, my, my do you think thing, you'd ever join a like a uh, like a, a revolt and riot maybe i don't know yeah i mean you say never right? i mean fuck right like imagine <laughs> Well, think about it. Like, if you're in France right now and you're like, the world's fucked. The world mm-hmm. is pretty. The world's totally fucked for the most part. Um, there's pockets that aren't like you know. You're, you li- we can live in bliss here in Canada a bit, but yeah, yeah. we're reminded by how fucked things are. Yeah, yeah. And we're, I mean, our president, our prime minister is fucked up too. Like, yeah. I voted for him, but I don't. I'm not psyched now. But like in France, when you're like, like you're rioting, you're like protesting against, and you're watching cops walk towards you. In any country's happening like as a revolt. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, again, it, could, it comes right back to what we were saying about people getting pissed off, right? You know, people. I think don't, I, think I, I would be there, but I'd be like three or four lines back. I wouldn't be right up front. Well, I'd know, still be choked. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I don't think I'd be like right up front. Like I think there's a lot of factors that kind of bring that person. People don't naturally want to revolt. I think like, there's external factors that kind of make people aggressive and if you make feel make them feel that passion about something there's always leaders and followers and people yeah, who are yeah. like fighters and, and lovers and stuff so i get that so, for sure so you, you take a look at you know obviously you just watched um sacrifice oh everybody it's an interesting i, I think it might be rigged but it's an interesting uh, no i don't i don't i don't i don't, I don't think it is <laughs> uh, it, it, the, the guy is a little bit offside the the, the character is a bit yeah, offside yeah. at that start but that's the, that's why he was chosen right that's yeah but my, my so here's the deal so I'm going to explain it quickly and I'll, I'll sure. ask him. So, so sacrifice everybody if you don't. It's a guy named Darren Brown. Pete introduced me to this guy, not personally, but just told me about him. Um, <laughs> I never met the man, but he um, he's a psychologist and like a magician and like a and a hypnotist. And he, he he sets up the scene for this guy to teach him that our beliefs sometimes are rooted in, in misconceptions and just our own ideas where we are locally. So we have to learn to be beyond those things and accept people for what they are and all these things. And so um, they get this guy to... Uh, he he's he's basically racist. I, I kind of right like totally. Yeah. 
he's an American guy and they, he kind of tells him he's going to, he manipulates him in a way that helps him realize he's racist and he should be helping people more and be more open to people's, what people have their sacrifice in life and what they put up with, which I totally agree with. But my question is, if he hadn't been manipulated by this guy, Darren Brown, and that situation happened, would he have felt that same compassion and tried to stop it instinctually rather than having those two or three months of influence with him through this guy, Darren Brown. Does that make sense? It totally does. Yeah. And I, and I, I don't think he would have, I think, I think the biggest thing for Darren Brown is to kind of let people know that these ideas and this ideology that you have, it's not, it might feel like it's who you are, but it's not completely right. And I think the idea is that being able to take someone who has those ideas and, and it, yeah, it, again, what you were saying about mind control or like all the tactics or everything he's used to kind of make him change. I think they're all good qualities to have. Everything that he learned from that experience was for like, it was all good for right. him. Right. You know, to a point, I, I think you from what you're saying, like, and you're like, <laughs> I would not agree with everything that he's doing. Something, right? I mean, I said it pretty early on in the show when yeah. I was watching. So I sent Peter text and I was like, Hey, I wouldn't do half the shit he's doing. But then I was like, you know, I, am I skeptical? Maybe. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's why I would have, I'm, I'm more open-minded because I'm being skeptical. I feel like when you're skeptical, you're more open-minded. I think maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like that's the case. Well, no, you're just questioning. You're just like, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're assessing so, everything. Like but this guy, I don't, I, I'm not an expert in this situation, but I am curious and I, I do hold out that he may have acted the same way without that influence of the Darren Brown guy teaching him these things. But obviously, I don't know for sure. I'm just, I think there's, I'm, I'm not trying to disprove this Darren guy. It was a fucking great show. And I want to watch the other two he's got on Netflix. That's two of their specials. And it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But he, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't disprove, I don't think you're wrong. I mean, I think you're right too. I don't uh, know. Well, I think maybe one of the reasons why they chose him too was because they maybe realized that there is some good in him as well, right? You know, they just need the kind of. He might have answered question five better than you know, somebody else answered question five. And he was also yeah. a racist. And I think that there's, you're totally right to be kind of like. The there's no control them. group. That's what I'm saying. It's like there's no placebo group where it's like we've got this guy and this guy. They're the exact same. They, don't, they can't do that. Totally. There's no exact same. And you can't person. go. Yeah. Totally. Right. I get that for sure. But it is interesting to watch. It's more. I think the guy breaks down. Mm. Like when he's staring the other guy's eyes. I'm not gonna give away the plot because I mean you could watch it. Darren Brown sacrifice is great. But that's uh, right. And the last the thing you kind of say about it, the better. I wouldn't try and because it's. But the, the the emotion that he shows. Uh, is pretty great. Yeah, it's incredible to show to see that. It just in right. that small instance in the middle there, when he is like right in front of him. Yeah, I got too much beer. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's an interesting thing. So, and the guy's from Florida, and that stands to me. I'm like, of course he is. Like the racist guy's from Florida. Of course he is, which is a shit thing to think. Because, I mean, he could have been from Kentucky, which is but he could have been from he could have been from Vancouver. I don't know, whatever, yeah. right? But again, it's just kind of like the the everything that he's brought up with is all, you know, it's like a um, like a social construction, right? That's all he's surrounded by. From he's been day. told these things totally. that and Cubans are taking his jobs, yeah. Mexicans are taking his jobs for yeah. sure. Yeah, and um, it's a fear thing for sure. But he um, but he had a, he ended up getting a sweet coat out of it. A jacket's legit. Pretty cool. It is pretty cool, right? It looks kind of like yeah. and, and you know, obviously, it goes it goes pretty far, <laughs> right? But it's it's very good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Yeah, I love it. So everybody, uh, everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody watching. Pete, yeah, uh, Darren Brown sacrifice. The other one's called like push. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's ten thirty, dude. We started this at like nine, I think. Really? Yeah. Uh, what? Should we just? What are we gonna do? Should we just end it? Yeah. yeah. Are we good? Yeah, I'm Any, good. Have, have, anything pressing? No. Where's yeah. your ne- Where's your next appearance? Like where, are gonna be, where are you going to be next? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Every every podcast I watch is like they're talking to comedians. Like, where are you going to be next? Tell us where you go. Oh, I'll be at the uh, improv on Tuesday. Come see me. It's like, I'm going to be skiing tomorrow. I'll meet at the okay, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be in the Alpine by five, <laughs> by ten. I'll see you then. See you there, peak chair Come see me. Yeah, yeah, purple jacket. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Purple jacket, green boots. Yeah. And you know, just to finish up, Anne Fred says that it's uh, she loves that purple jacket because. She always knows it's me. And so it's and, and Fred's a friend of ours, and yeah. she's a great snowboarder, ex kind of semi pro. And we all and Pete and her ride together a lot. So yeah, and it's yeah. funny because she uh, she'll say like she can notice me. 
Right. And it's like when I'm tomahawking, right? It's like purple jacket, green boots. Purple jacket, green boots. Purple yeah. jacket, green boots. <laughs> Dude, I have had, I have had two. I usually have two ski outfits. The word outfit sounds so stupid to me, but I've had two ski sets of clothing mm -hmm. that I wear. Because sometimes I'm like. How's Adam doing over there? He's getting right there. He's just shut up. My roommates here are doing a podcast. Um, but I need, I like to have the incognito style. Yeah. Like, I'm happy when I have the blue jacket. I got rid of it. I'm like, now I have new stuff. I'm like, yeah, no one can see me. But I mean, I want my friends to see who well, I am. Pe people know it's me whenever I'm skiing, right? Because yeah, somebody else sure. really has that jacket. Right. And zero people cool. have that jacket. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that jacket before. No way. That's good. Well, I don't know. Like, have you? No. And we're usually in the same vicinity within two kilometers on a regular basis, right? <laughs> you know, so I feel like I haven't seen that jacket. But yeah, I think the have you ever walked up with somebody and go, "Hey, Pete?" Oh, wait, no, that's not him. No, but I've done it a few. That's a good, like, when you think someone looks like a doppelganger, and you're like, "Oh my mm -hmm. god!" You're like, "Hey!" And you were so convinced it's them. They're like, "They're like, who the fuck are you?" And you're like, "Oh, you're you thought I thought you're somebody else." And then it becomes like. You have to explain to that person who the other person. That guy's like, I don't give a fuck who the person you thought and I you're was. Trying, like, you're like, I'm just gonna shut up. And just yeah. Like, yeah. so when you and I were skiing today, did you hear that guy go, "Hey, Dan"? No. The guy thought it was Dan Treadway for sure because okay. it happened to me. It's happened. Sorry, oh. Dan Treadway. We don't look the same really, but we are long hair beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a great skier. Of course, Dan Treadway. Yeah, yeah. 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 He surfs. He skis on surface skis. <laughs> Big <laughs> bananas. <laughs> yeah, he would be like, "Fuck you, Proctor." So, uh, yeah, pretty much. But um, no, they kind of look the same, I guess, from from a distance. And somebody I, who's somebody who's I, uninformed. I get that. Yeah, yeah, totally. So when that guy was like Dan, I'm like, I know what he means. I'm not gonna respond though, because I'm not Dan, yeah, and I don't yeah, be like, oh, yeah, I know who he is. I have to explain to the guy how I knew how to respond. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, um, sh should we call it? Yeah, let's call it, man. High five. That's the clap. Good chat, Pete. Thanks, man. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, we'll see everybody at some other time.